Hey everybody, I'm back again. This is Sanisha with the Greater Grace Ministry YouTube page. I welcome you guys and I thank you for tuning in. Today we're just going to have a, a short testimony of our pastor, Bishop David Foster. Hi. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to do a video um, to encourage somebody who may be looking to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but they just have not been filled or maybe you're interested in learning about what this is or you have never been filled but you're just wondering if this is still something that is that we do today as believers and I want to tell you that it is and I want to tell you about our pastor's experience and how he got filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask him our first question. So I remember when you would preach sometimes, you would always say um, that you were filled with the Holy Ghost, but it took a while and um, you struggled in trying to be filled. I just mm -hmm. wanted to know, like, how did, what was that process like? Like, when did you know, like, oh, this is something I want for myself? Well, I'll give you the very short version because there's a long version, but... Uh... I got baptized in uh, Bethlehem Temple when I was five. Okay. Uh, my mom and dad were uh, saved. My father was a preacher. And so uh, when I first got baptized, all those many years ago, my sisters who are older than me, they went up and I went up and, you know, I was, I was so short, you couldn't see me as I went down the aisle. So I got baptized and I uh, terrified the Holy Ghost. I didn't really know what I was doing. and so. Uh, I gave up after a while. Moved to San Diego about a year later and uh, went to Bishop Caldwell's church. And uh, when I went there, I wasn't really into anything, but you know, about seven years later, I tried to get the Holy Ghost. You know, I, I knew enough about God that I, I thought, hey, let me, let me uh, get the Holy Ghost. And I, I tarried. And for whatever reason, I never got filled. And so I, I turned bitter. And uh, the devil, now I know it was the devil, the, uh, in my mind I said, I'm never going to get the Holy Ghost. And so I might as well, if I'm not going to get the Holy Ghost, let me, <laughs> let, me, let me go for broke, right? And that lasted uh, for the next five years. Jeez. And my father uh, uh, moved to Sacramento, where we are now, and I went to Christ Temple, and uh, I didn't even want to go to church. I lied and said, I don't feel good, I'm sick. But one day I went and uh, for the wrong reasons. I said, I'm gonna go check these girls out, right? <laughs> so I went, I went to church and sat way in the back and I saw young people up there at the altar. I mean, they were really into serving the Lord and they were looking happy and whatnot. And I was miserable, you know. I, I had a good life, you know. My, my parents uh, were great, great parents and had great sisters but I have any peace. And so I'm sitting on the back bench, right? And I'm crying like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was uh, 17, and that was in February, 1963. So that's a bunch of years ago. Uh, and so when I uh, start, start seeking the Holy Ghost, the, it came back to me, I'm, you're not gonna be saved. You're not going to get the Holy Ghost. And, and from February, March, April, every Sunday, every Friday, every Tuesday, every time I got a chance, I'm seeking the Holy Ghost. Nothing. And so, um, on, I think it was May the 4th or somewhere in that week, I said, I might as well just end this. So I was seriously thinking about suicide. Now, this is the short story, so I didn't. <laughs> I'm still here. Right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and so... I, I went to church that morning, and uh, I had made up my mind. I said, "I'm this is it. I'm either going to get the Holy Ghost, or I'm going to die trying." And so I went to the altar, and and uh, nothing happened. And so, okay, this I made up my mind, and this is God's truth. I said, "I am not leaving here until I get the Holy Ghost." And, and in my mind, I saw Tuesday coming, and <laughs> Wednesday coming. And Thursday come, I said, they're gonna have to just take me out dead. I went that night and my father was preaching. I'm sitting on the on the, the pew 
And uh, in the middle of his preaching, I began to just praise God and worship. I said, Lord, this is it. I'm not leaving until you fill me. And before the altar call was made, I started speaking in tongues. That's so awesome. Mine didn't happen that way, but that was great. Yeah, that was my experience, and that's why the devil can't tell me I'm not. Right. Because even while I was getting saved, he said, that's not the, that's not tongues. Yeah. He said, you sound like uh, uh, that Mexican mouse, <laughs> I forget what his name was, Pepe Le Pew or somebody like that. <laughs> right, that's how it was for me, like, um, in my experience. Like, even while I was speaking in tongues, I'm like, this cannot be real. So yeah. I'm trying to speak in English, and I'm like, same thing. okay, this is real. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. And you know, it reminds yeah. me of when last Sunday you had preached on like um, God like waiting until that God moment. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he makes a lot of people wait. Maybe you're trying to like, um, this is for you watching. You know, it may be like you're trying to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but you feel like God is not listening to you or he doesn't care. Right. right. Or, you know, it's not meant for you. But I just think that he's just waiting for that to for that confirmation to let you know that it's through him and not by your own works or you know your own thoughts or other people's thoughts or other people's words but it's through him that you get filled so absolutely yeah that was like a when you were preaching he bishop preached on that last week and i was like damn that does remind me of when i got filled with the holy ghost like that is so true and he does do that like all the time like no this is my world and i'm gonna show you yeah. that this is my world i'm like okay. i'm in charge right yeah <laughs> but it's so awesome he's so cool you're just amazing i know you're watching you're proud of me <laughs> all right anyways um, so, well, I guess I did answer that question. I was going to ask, why do you think you weren't filled immediately when you asked God to fill you? I can answer that question because uh, I had given up everything, right? And I'm 17. I'm getting ready to graduate school. I had a girlfriend. <laughs> and, you know, I, I had been smoking and, you know, I, I, and I did things that I wasn't totally correct. Yeah. And I'm giving up everything, right? And so the girlfriend, I, I give her up. <laughs> cigarettes, I give. I threw my cigarettes in the trash can. I had some records, some R&B records, and I took them into the can and I cracked each of them individually. So, it, and all right, I'm look, and I still didn't get it. Right. And so I'm, I'm saying, what in the world is going on? <laughs> After I got the Holy Ghost, I recognized what it was. I didn't think I was going to be filled. I didn't think I could be filled. And so it wasn't until I gave up completely to him and surrendered to him, and he didn't even let me get to the altar. Right. And uh, so it was wonderful. And, and uh, uh, the good thing about God, one of the good things, one of the excellent things about God is that uh, if you seek him, he will allow you to find him. And uh, the peace that I had, I mean, wow, because I didn't have any peace. Yeah. Like I said, I had a good family, a good upbringing, good in school and that kind of thing. I didn't have any peace. That almost took my life. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost just changed everything. I got a scholarship. Uh, that, uh, after I got the Holy Ghost on the 11th of May, got a scholarship a few weeks later to go to UC Berkeley. So God is good. He is. I was going to ask them, how did, how did you feel when you weren't filled? But I think you answered that. Like you didn't have any peace. Mm -mm. It was just discouraging. And One of these days, you can ask me about what it means to dream your life. Because I, I, had, I had a life oh. in my dreams, and then I had reality. Yeah. Reality wasn't what I wanted, so dreaming. When I was a kid, that's how I spent my Sometimes I wouldn't get up to, this is funny. It wasn't that I was in bed sleep for a while. I'd wake up in the morning, but I was, the dream wasn't complete. So I'd stay in bed for another couple of hours to finish this dream out. <laughs> Technicolor and stereo. <laughs> that is funny. But okay. uh, now I don't have to live in that world. Yeah, sometimes I do find myself doing that. And I'd be like, okay, bring it back to reality. I think God would be like, you're tripping, but you'll get it together. Cause I do that often. I think as a young person, we kind of just wonder what our life is going to be like. And you start making all these. Can you, can you imagine what the Lord would would be like? <laughs> if he, and you're tripping, right? And the Lord would say, "Hey, Sanisha, you're tripping." He, I think he has told me that. Cause I tell myself, like, "You tripping?" And I'm like, "I knew that was you." Cause I was like going to a whole thought yeah, for like 30 yeah. minutes, and I'm like, "Okay, I need yeah. to calm down." Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. 
Oh, Lord. Okay. It's kind of funny when you think about where you've been and where you are and how <laughs> the Lord just kind of told you to stay. Shut up. Be quiet. I yeah. got this, right? And it's so like, it's not, I don't know, I guess it's not really a bad thing. Like, you just kind of laugh about it. Like, yeah, I know. Like, that's like genuine relationship. Like, he can actually talk mm -hmm. to you like he's your friend or... Mm -hmm. You know, but then it's like no respect loss either. Like, and he still respects you and you respect him. Exactly, it's like a, exactly. Like equal type of relationship. Exactly. You know, and I just barely got that revelation. Like, even though I was saved for like seven years now, it's like five years later, I finally started to understand things. Like, maybe it was a lot I still need to be delivered from. Well, yeah, I, I think the uh, <laughs> I think the word that uses is the right one, and that's, that's relationship. A lot yeah. of people know God, but they don't have a relationship. Right. I mean, just like we have a relationship, and we're having this conversation, we're kind of, you know, chucking it up, laughing up, that kind of thing. And someone that I didn't know, it's, you know, we're kind of, yeah. I don't know, let me, should I say <laughs> this, should I not say that? Yeah. But the Lord wants you to have that kind of familiar, familiarity with Him. To be able to, if you got to cry, Lord, I, I'm losing it. You yeah. know, we don't have to be a real formal. Lord, I'm coming to thee right now it's because you know it that I loveth thee and I am really in trouble. If, you know, and the Lord say, hey, you tripping, right? right. <laughs> like, tell me down. what you're talking about. <laughs> That's what I love about it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is amazing. Yep. Um, and this is the last question. Um, this really isn't a question. It's just um, wanting to leave the video just with words of encouragement for someone who genuinely wants to be filled and they feel like they've gotten rid of some things like you did with the CDs and the, you know, girlfriend and stuff like that, or just yeah in their mind, like getting rid of those thoughts or just whatever they feel like they are trying to do and they really want to be filled, but they feel like God doesn't hear them. What are your closing words of encouragement for them? Well, I guess the... The word I would use is, is hope, don't lose hope. Uh, last Sunday, uh, I was talking about the woman that had the issue of blood. And sometimes when everything else fails, she tried the doctors, you know, she paid them and things got worse. Sometimes when we get to the point where we can't help ourselves and seem like nobody else can help, that's when, and there's a statement that says, in, in our extremity is God's opportunity. You know, when we get to the point when nothing is working, you know, our mind is clouded, we don't have ideas. And this is the good thing. The Lord deals with us beyond listening, beyond the intelligence of our mind. Because, because in all of us, there is, there is a place that only God can fill. We try to do it with music, we try to do it with sex, we try to do it with job, we try to do it with uh, vacations going, and, and then there's still this emptiness, and then he'll make, he'll make it possible, like maybe even for some of you, that you'll hear something about this Jesus. And you say, hey, you know what? I tried other stuff that didn't work. I tried, you know, drinking and doing drugs and all this stuff. Let me try this. And, and what the Lord does, he draws. At a, at a moment of your greatest need. And sometimes when you don't know how to express it, you know, you just shake your head and you just put your head down and you, you know, what am I gonna do? And the Lord will speak something to you that Tanisha said or Bishop Foster said or some friend said, you know, God help me in this time of trouble. And, and sometimes we have to be at a level where we can listen. Because when everything's going right, you're not gonna listen. <laughs> You know, hey, things are good for me. I don't need God. Look at what's happening. Then he'll, this will move, this will move. Things get bad, and then you're by yourself. And you say, you know what? I need something. And and uh, if you're at that point where you need something, you you need uh, something that's beyond your your reach, beyond what Mama can say or a friend can tell you, and just reach out to him. You know, he's he's known you all your life. He knew you before you got here. He's, he, he, he hears your thoughts, even the hitter, hears on your head are numbered. And uh, before you can express yourself, he already knows what you're feeling. And he wants you to come. So I, I invite you to just, you know, you don't have to say any particular prayer. You don't have to go to the book, just, you know, Lord save me. You know, when Peter was drowning, I'm <laughs> walking on the water. Sometimes things are go, going good and you, you fall and you can't get up. And Peter said, Lord save me. 
And sometimes just those three words will activate something in the spirit and will bring you up to a different level. And the main thing is once you get up, don't forget God. Find out more you can, more, more about Him. And, and I guarantee you, I've been walking with God now for 55 years and it, uh, He's never failed me. He's taken care of me. Been some tough roads, but uh, He never left me down, he always picked me up. And so I recommend uh, Jesus to you. And I thank Shanisha for letting me share this with you. I hope you have a great day. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, like the video, share with somebody you know who is genuinely looking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And yes, it's still relevant today to clear that up. But um, yeah, so peace out, y'all. Be sure to pull up with the peace. Peace. <laughs> Bye.